me and I will forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. By these words of Confucius, I, Shuhat the Pad, welcome you all to our science exhibition, Synapse 2021-22, organized by the students and teachers of Science Department of Primary School. A very good afternoon to a respected chairman, sir, director, sir, principal, sir, and ma'am, headmaster, sir, our panel of judges, Mr. Shorofresh, sir, from the chemistry department, Miss Aruna Gaur, ma'am, and Mrs. Agumune Chatterjee, ma'am, from the physics department, and all parents and students of Madhustali Vidya Peet and MCKVNs present on this virtual platform. A science exhibition is held to show that education is not only a means to learn and write, but to have a participation in the development of education. As it is often said, action speaks louder than words. So without practical or experiments, but for the children to learn and remember important things related to science. Science exhibitions are usually organized to make the children aware of the various developments of science and its importance in daily life. Today, my friends have made beautiful models with cells, wires, and various other items. I am sure you all appreciate their hard work. So, let me begin with our first model, buoyancy, Durdanto Banerjee of class 3A. Good afternoon, my respected teachers, judges, and my dear friends. I'm going to perform an experiment on points. The points force is caused by the pressure exert by the fluid in which an object is immersed. The points force always point upward because the pressure of the fluid increases with depth. Here I have two glasses of water, one is normal and one is salty and normal legs. Here I am taking one egg and putting in the normal water. Here we can see that the egg is sunk in the water because the egg weight is more than the water weight. And then I am taking another egg and putting in the salty water. Here we can see that the egg is floating on the water because the egg weight is less than the water weight. We can see in the first glass that the egg is sunk because the upward force that the water is giving to the egg is less than the egg weight. And in the second glass we can see that the egg is floating because the upward force that the water is giving to the egg is more than the egg weight. The upward force that I am saying is called the up thrust and the phenomenon of the experiment is points. Thank you. Wow, Dudanto, you made it happen. The egg was really floating in the water. Thank you. Urinary system is presented by Onirbad Mukherjee of class 4A. Good afternoon, respected teachers. Today, I am representing the model of the human external system. I have used cardboard, a cut-off bottle, water, and pipe to make this model. Just as how we throw waste materials from our house, our body too has a system to remove the wastes. The biological process involved in the removal of the harmful metabolic wastes from our body is called excretion. The excretory system is made up of a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder, and a urethra. Apart from this, it also has a renal artery and a renal vein. Kidneys are the two bean shaped organs located in the abdomen on the either side of the backbone. Kidney is the basic filtration unit. The kidneys filter the blood. 
they help to get rid of waste in the form of urine. The urine is carried by tubes or ureters to the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder stores the urine. When the bladder is full, the urine is passed out from the body through the urethra. The renal artery carries mineral-rich oxygenated blood from the heart to the kidneys. The renal veins carry deoxygenated blood after the waste products have been removed from the kidneys to the heart. This is how human excreted system removes wastes from our body. I am using water to show the process of the human excreted system. When I pour water here, the water is being purified in the kidneys and then going to the urinary bladder through a pair of thin tubes called ureters and then being excreted out of the body through the urethra. This is urine. This is how human excreted system works. Thank you. Good going, Anir Beb. Very well demonstrated. Thank you. Water dispenser is presented by Anirudh Kumar Singh of Class 5A. Good afternoon, respected teachers and judges present here. My name is Anirudh Kumar Singh from Class 5A. I made a, a water dispenser. Water dispenser is based on the principle of gravity and vacuum pressure. When cap of the bottle is closed, vacuum pressure is created, which obstructs the water to drain out. When cap of the bottle is opened, slowly the air enters into the bottle and the water inside it drains out into the glass kept under the tap due to gravity and release of pressure. As you can see, Hello. opening the bottle's cap, slowly the air enters into the bottle and the water inside it drains out into the glass kept under the tap. I made the water dispenser using cardboard, waste bottle, a pipe, and a plastic glass. I also used a gum to stick them. Thank you. Well, it couldn't be better than what you have done, Anirudh. Well done. Keep it up. Thank you. Sunita ma'am, I think Aruna ma'am has a question. Oh, sorry. Yes, Aruna ma'am. Yes. Anirudh, you have really demonstrated so well. You can, me, can you tell me something about this gravity? Yes, ma'am. Gravity is something that attracts something towards itself, like Earth's gravity. We are standing on the Earth due to its gravity. Otherwise, we were been flowing. Thank you, Anirudh. Very nicely said. Thank you, ma'am. The next boy is Adhiraj Kundu of class 4D, Hydraulic Bridge. Adhiraj, please raise hand. Adhiraj, please raise hand. Ma'am, he's there. None. Please start, Adhiraj. Good afternoon, teachers and my dear friend. I have made a working model of hydraulic bridge by using cardboard, glue, tissue paper, 12 ml sewage, rubber pipes, skewers, thread, and some decoratives. Here first, I have put water in the syringe and connected it to another syringe kit with water with the help of rubber pipes. Here, when I push the plunger of the syringe, the pressure is exerted into the water without any loss of its portion. And the splendor of another syringe, which is located here underneath the bridge, moves. And this is how my bridge works. Now, let me demonstrate it to you. 
when we push the thunder of the city the bridge moves up isn't that amazing oh wow now the boat can pass easily when the boat passed now we will pull the thunder of the city again and the bridge will slowly move down now let me explain you what is pascal's law pascal's law is actually called pascal's principle but in liquid mechanics it is called pascal's law only when we store any liquid in a container and exert pressure on it the pressure change is transmitted without any loss of its portion to another side of the container and this is how pascal's law works Thank you. Lovely project, Adiraj, and thank you for telling us the use of Pascal's law in our daily life. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Adiraj. Yes, there's a question for you, Adiraj. Adiraj, uh, it was really a wonderful model. Can you tell me how did you th uh, think about making such a model? What prompted you, rather? Ma'am, I saw. I actually saw in cartoon that there were bridges that can lift up. So I searched in Google how can this do. So I read about this hydraulic mechanism, and then my class teacher told that we have a science fair, I mean science exhibition uh, competition. So I decided to make this with cardboard and some waste materials. Okay, thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Agumani ma'am also has a question to ask. Yes, Agumani ma'am. Yeah, ma'am, I'm having a lot of... Uh, yes, yes. I just want Adhiraj, to ask... the uh, question is for you. Yes, Adhiraj, like, yes, can you just name the law based on which you have made this bridge? Ma'am, it is... You don't Pascal's have to state law. the law. Just can you name the law? Ma'am, it is Pascal's law. I explained it in the last. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Actually, I'm having so much of network issues. Whatever you said, like at the end, I could not hear. Okay, very nice. Ma'am, did I repeat? No, it's okay. It's okay. No, no, it's okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Volcanic eruption will be demonstrated by Kaushal Dugar of class 3C. Good afternoon, everyone. This is my working model of volcanic eruption. Principle model based on acid base reaction. Now, let's begin with my ingredients. This is baking soda. This is Eno. This is dry food color. This is vinegar. This is liquid dish washing detergent. Now, I am going to show my experiment. First, I will add all my baking soda to Eno. Now, I will add some food color into it. Then, I will mix this nicely. Now, let's begin with dry ingredients. I will add all my dry ingredients into the volcano. Now, I will add liquid dish washing detergent. And now, I will add vinegar into the volcano. And what we say, the volcano will look there, just like a real volcanic eruption. What we observe? Vinegar is dilute acetic acid and baking soda is sodium bicarbonate, which is a base. When they mix together, 
the vinegar, the acid, baking soda, and produces salt and carbon dioxide gas. Carbon dioxide forms bubbles in liquid dishwashing detergent. What we conclude? Even though the solvent do not react, the exact alkalic reaction that occurs naturally. However, it gives a basic idea about what lava looks like when it erupts. Thank you. Oh, Kaushal, you really outdid yourself today. Thank you. Thank you. The Tangsha Shortcut of Class 4B has made a projector. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I have made a projector. The materials needed are a torch, magnifying glass, thermocol, a transparent paper, and a sketch pen to draw anything. A projector or kinetoscope is an optimal device that projects an image onto a surface. Commonly, a projection screen. Most pro uh, projectors create an projection by shining light through a small lens of transparent lens. A magnifying glass is a lens that produces an enlarged image, typically set in a frame with a handle for you and used to examine small or finely detailed things like fingerprints and fine prints. Magnifying glass was invented by the Franciscan Fire and scholar Roger Bacon in Oxford, UK. It was the Lumiere brothers who invented the first really successful movie projector based on the work of the French inventor, Leon Bowley, the cinematograph. For this procedure, we need to have our lights off. It makes the projector not have to be so bright. A white screen reflects light well and doesn't alter the projected image. I used a transparent paper because it let all the light pass through. For this procedure, we need to switch off our lights. When I switch off our lights, I try to focus the light on the small image. When the light passes through the magnifying glass, it enlarges and falls on the paper. When the enlarged beam of light falls on the transparent paper, it increases the size of the image and then falls on a white screen. So we can see a bigger image of the small image drawn here. So this was my demonstration. Thank you. Well done, Diptangchu. We could really see the star out there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Dipangshu. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. What kind of lens is being used? Ma'am, here, ma here we are using a convex lens. Okay. And what kind of lens uh, you are having in your spectacles, can you say? Ma'am, mm. I think it is contact lens. Okay, uh, you just have a, you just think about it. Okay, since you are doing so well with the lenses, so you have a lot of interest in physics I could make up. Thank you, nicely said. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Vidan Thiravat of class 4C, surface tension. Good afternoon, teachers, judges, and my dear friends. I am Vedant Prabhat of class 4C and today I am going to show you the best example of surface tension. But before, surface tension. Surfaces at best to shrink into the minimum surface area possible. 
Surface tension is what allows objects with a higher density than water, such as vapor plates and insects, to float on a water surface without becoming partly submerged. And so now, let us begin with my experiment. For the experiment, we need a glass, a glass of water, a card, and some coins. First, we will put the card on the empty glass and place some coins on it. It falls. But when we pour water into the empty glass, place the card on it, I'll put some coins on it, it does not fall. Once more, again, and the last. This is because the surface tension between the water and the card Holds the card firmly, which is balanced by the weight of the coin from the other side. You might be asking that what is the use of surface tension in our day-to-day -day life? The effects of surface tension have central importance in many everyday phenomena. It causes small droplets of rain to stick to our windows, creates bubbles when we add detergent to our sink, and propels water striding insects on the surface of ponds. Some examples: small water strider can walk on water because its weight is not enough to penetrate the surface. Floating a needle, a carefully placed small needle can be made to float on water even though it is several times as dense as water. Thank you. You have got it Vedant. Great work. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, Shohatta, you can move on to the next participant. Shohatta ki beej of class 5A has made a DC motor. Shohatta ki, please low, uh, raise your hand. Good afternoon, teachers, judges, and my dear friends. I am Shattaki Bej from class 5A. Today, I am demonstrating my working model, the mini motor. To make this, I have used very simple things, which are a battery, magnet, a switch, safety pins, and the insulated copper wire coil. Here, two magnetic fields are working together. The first magnetic field is created due to the presence of the magnet. And the second one is created due to the flow of electricity which is generated by the battery. That means here electrical energy is converted to mechanical energy due to the presence of magnetic field. We can use this motor in various electrical machines by increasing the power of the battery and the magnet. Thank you. Wonderful, Shatuki. Keep up your good work. Thank you. Any questions for him? Yes, sir. Shivanjan Sharkar of class 3C has made a new form of magic and it is a magic tea. Good morning, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. And my dear friends, I will show you how to make magic tea with the Parachita flowers. It is a popular drink. I'm sorry, I think he's having some uh, glitches, technical glitches. Just wait for a few minutes and then. Okay. Yes, Shivanjan. Let's move to next participant. Yes, let's move to the next participant until Shivanjan comes back. Okay, Shohatta, call. Okay. Please okay. call the next part. Yes. 
The next participant is Adigesh Kundu of class 4A. Electric lift. Good afternoon, teachers and my dear friends. My name is Adikesh Kundu of class 4A. Today, I will demonstrate my walking lift. I have made a model of electric lift by using cardboard, motor, pulleys, string, small switches, and a battery. In my model, the motor is activated by the battery, which then pulls my lift up. And on reversing the direction of my battery, my lift comes down. The battery gives the electrical energy to drive the motor in a horizontal direction. The energy is transferred into vertical motion by three pulleys and a string. On reversing the battery poles, the motor and pulleys move in the reverse direction. So, my lift comes down. The working principle of my elevator or lift is similar to a pulley system. A pulley system is used to draw water from well. This pulley system can be designed with a bucket, a rope, and a wheel. A bucket is connected to a rope that passes throughout the wheel. Now, let me demonstrate my electric lift. Thank you. Opposite rotation of the pulley is done on reversing the current flow through the changing of the polarity of the battery. The battery power to this model is controlled by an on and off switch. Thank you. Super jo job, Adikesh. Very well explained. I think Agamoni ma'am has a question for you. Yes, Agamoni ma'am. Please unmute yourself. Yes. Yes, uh, Adikesh, uh, your model is very nice. Who helped you in making the model? Ma'am, I, I, I made it in myself, but the motor and the pool, and this pulleys and string, my father uh, bought it from the bazaar. Okay, very good. Very nice. Thank you, ma'am. Ujwal Dugar of class 5B will be explaining us drip irrigation. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Myself, Ujwal Dugar of class 5B. Today, I present before you a small model on surface drip irrigation. So, what is drip irrigation? Drip irrigation simply involves watering all the plants below at ground level slowly rather than watering them from above by hand. Over here as we can see there are two wells containing water which are connected by a pipeline. There is a water pump present at the below of the first well which pumps water to the second well through the pipeline which contains small drips on the way. And they supply all continuous water to all the plants below. I have put this paper clip over here to act as a valve and regulate the flow of water. Now, what are the advantages of drip irrigation? With drip irrigation, there will be conservation of water. As if we water all the plants by a watering can, it may consume a lot of water and the water may also be distributed unevenly among all the plants. There will be higher yields of crops and there will be less dependency on weather as no matter what weather it is. The water will be continuously coming from the two wells and the plants will be growing. I have prepared this model using scrap cardboard materials, some old tins and boxes, acrylic paint, glitter, artificial plant, soil, a pipe, a water pump, a switch, some batteries, and some paper. Thank you. 
thank you ajwal that was a remarkable job and you have explained very well thank you uh so we have got shivanjan with us uh can we call upon him yes shohat to shivanjan shorkar of class 3c has made a new form of magic and it is a magic tea stand up good afternoon sir and my dear friend here i will show you how to make a magic tea with the paracetamol flower It's a popular drink in Thailand. Many of the benefits it helps to make strong immunity, helps in weight loss, improves digestion, improves hair and skin health. I will also show a simple magic show. Wait for it. We need a cup of boiling water and one cardio on today. Marvelous, Shivanjan. It that was really a magic. Thank you. Yes, Shohato, you can move on to the next participant. Yes, ma'am. Air pressure will be demonstrated by Rita Bas Patakcharya of Class Four A. Rita Bas, please raise your hand. Yes. Good afternoon, my respected teachers, and all my dear friends and judges. Today, I'm going to show how the air pressure works. The things that I want to do this experiment is a bottle, a straw, a bowl, a balloon, and color water. In this experiment, the concept of air pressure has been discussed. the air inside the bottle is little bit but not enough to permit the balloon to inflate the collision of the air particles creates high pressure with the walls that's why when a balloon is released the high pressure air flows out on the low pressure air and when the hole is unplugged the air flows back into the bottle the main objective to show this experiment is how the air pressure works amazing effort ritobash well done thank you ma'am no questions for you okay so we can go to the next participant shohat sir yes ma'am 
the next participant is Purvana Sharkar of class 4B. Circuit board. Yes, Purvano, please unmute. Yes, start, start. Good, after, good afternoon to my judges, teachers, and my dear friends present here. Electrical circuit. An electrical circuit is a closed path in which electrons move to produce electric currents. There are three basic components of any electrical circuit. Number one, source of electrical energy such as battery. Number two, devices such as fan, tube lights. Number three, a closed loop of conducting material as wires and conductors. The circuits are of two types, namely series and parallel circuits. Serial circuit. In series, the same amount of current flows through all the components and components are arranged in a line. If one component breaks down, the whole circuit will be off. Its total voltage is voltage 1 plus voltage 2 plus voltage 3 and so on. In parallel, the current flows through each component and combines to form the current flow through the source. The components are arranged parallelly with each other. Even if one component or more component breaks down, the rest will work because it has its own independent circuitry. Its total voltage is voltage 1 equal to voltage 2 equal to voltage 3 and so on. In our house, we have seen electric switchboard by which we can operate our electric fans and lights. I have made a switchboard of simulator. And now I am presenting you my circuit board. This is the circuit board I have made. This is the source, the battery. The components which I have connected here is a LED light, a motor operated fan, some switches, and some wire connected components. Here, the wires are internally connected. Here, I have made two connections. One parallel and one series connection. Parallel connection. These two switches are connecting this motor parallelly from its source. If I press this switch, the fan will be on. If I press this switch, the fan will be on. Here, if one component breaks down, the rest will work because every component has its own independence. And on my other hand, I have series connection. In series, the same amount of current flows through all the components and components are arranged in a line. If one component breaks down, the whole circuit will be off. This was the example given by me of series and parallel circuits. Namaskar and thank you. Well, it couldn't be better explained the way you have done, Purvanu. And Purvanu, there's a question from you for one of from our judges. Yes, judges. Yeah, Purvanu, uh, well explained, very well explained and nicely made the circuit mm -hmm. boards even. Can you tell me in our household circuit, which kind of system is being used? Ma'am? In AC, we can see... Uh, you talked about, uh, just I'm intervening, you talked about series and parallel. So in our household circuit, which one do we use? Ma'am, we use parallel. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, I'd like to add one question with that. If you allow me. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, Purvana, you said that it is a parallel circuit that we are using. Any particular reason why we are using parallel over series connection? Any reason behind it? Sir, 
smart water water supply system is presented by shoptoshi ghosh of class 5c good afternoon my respected judges and my dear friends today i will show my model smart water supply system it runs on electricity but if there is no electricity then it also runs on battery so let's introduce you to the components of my model this is the microcontroller circuit the moisture sensor the pipe the pump the reservoir and the soil this microcontroller circuit consists of some programmable ics a relay and some wires this microcontroller circuit is the main body of my project now i will explain a little bit about my project this microcontroller circuit senses that the soil is dry or wet to this moisture sensor when the soil has dryness in it then the microcontroller circuit turns on the component medical and the flow of water starts when the soil has got adequate amount of water then the microcontroller circuit turns off the pump automatically so that is the explanation of my project now i will show the real world of my project now the water is flowing because the soil is dry now the flow of water has stopped it means that the microcontroller circuit has turned off the pump automatically so that's the real work of my project now i will confidently tell that my project is successful because it can be used in our day to day life and even in an agricultural field when we are not at home for a long time then we can install this machine in our garden thank you well done shaptoshi uh, so we can move on to the next participant and show her the please carry on Gas exerts pressure will be demonstrated by Othri Nondi of Class Three D. Everybody, today I will show you an experiment which will prove that gas exerts pressure. Today. Now I have two bottles. Both of them are connected by two straws. One of them is full of ink water, and the other one is empty. In the bottle full of ink water, there is a straw leading outside, and underneath the straw, a glass is present. Now. I will add some vinegar into the empty bottle. And now 
I will add some baking soda into the vinegar. And now I have closed the lid very tight. And what do we see now? The ink water is flowing out of the pipe into the glass. Why is this happening? This is happening because vinegar, which is diluted as a classic, reacts with baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate, to form sodium acetate, which is a salt, along with water and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. Now, as carbon dioxide is a gas, it travels up this pipe to the other pipe, goes down this pipe, and puts pressure onto the ink water. The pressure being put onto the ink water makes it flow out of the straw into the glass. This experiment proves that gas exerts pressure. Thank you. Good going, O3. Keep up your good work. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Shohato. Wind me is presented by Shunandan Mitra of class 5C. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Shunandan Mitra of, of class 5C of MCK Jivan Vidya P. Today, I am going to present before you a working model of a wind mill, which uses wind energy to generate electricity. I have not used any other type of fuel or batteries to generate electricity. It is a pollution free and the cleanest means of generating electricity. I have used a plastic fan, a DC motor, a stand, a wire and a LED light to show when the wind turbine is rotating, it is generating electricity in the house. I have placed my model near the sea because there is a continuous supply of wind near the sea. My model works on the principle that the wind turbine converts the kinetic energy of the wind by the aerodynamic force of the rotor blade. When this rotor blade spins, they convert the mechanical energy into electrical energy and lights up the bulb in the house. Likewise, in this full model, I have used this fan as a source of wind. When the wind is blowing, the wind turbine is rotating and the rotor in the DC motor is rotating and it is converting the mechanical energy into electrical energy and lights up the bulb in the house. India has a large population, but India is unable to meet their energy requirement as they are dependent on the conventional and non-renewable energy sources which has landed themselves into trouble. India has a scope of utilizing the wind energy for harnessing the electricity. India, there are five schools in Sundarbans which are running on the basis of the wind turbine. The wind turbine is set up in Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and in West Bengal. And they are also set up in Namkana, Bokkali and Fraser Ganj in West Bengal. The advantages of my model are it is a pollution-free method of generating electricity. It is a renewable source of energy. It does not disturb the farming operation, and it is and it is and it reduces dependence on fossil fuels. Now I will show how my model works. So Nandan, I'm sorry, we cannot hear you. We have the in the house. Yes.
Okay. So, Sunantan, you went an extra mile to demonstrate your project. Very well done. Good work. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, yes, Shohat. Yes. Ayush Banerjee of Class 4B will be presenting a new form of technology, and it is an intelligent fish feed. Good afternoon, all respected teachers, judges, and my dear friends. Today, I am going to demonstrate my functional model known as the intelligent fish feeder. The intelligent fish feeder was created by me to solve one of our household problems. The problem was that whenever we went out of our house for vacation, our fishes were left unfed. Some of you may be having similar problems. Well, not to worry. You can solve this problem with the help of my innovative model known as the Intelligent Fish Feeder. Intelligent Fish Feeder can be accessed from anywhere in the world because the feeder is connected to a smart plug and the smart plug is connected to my mobile via Wi-Fi through internet. I can also set specific timers on when I want to turn off the fish feeder to not feed my fishes or turn it on to feed my fishes. I am using a software known as Vipro Smart Home. It comes along with the smart plug. Now you will observe that I will push this button and the DC motor has activated. The fish uh, food is dropping into the fish bowl. But ma'am, uh, I am terribly sorry because there is a power cut at my home and without power, my fish feeder does not work. Okay. Okay, so we can understand. So it's over now. Yes, Ayush? Only the class part, it did not work. Okay, okay. Fabulous work. But uh, one thing is there that now we can relax and go out on a vacation. Thank you, Ayush, for telling us that about such a good, uh, you know, site. That is the Wipro Smart Home. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, Shaurav sir has a question for you. Yes, Shaurav sir? Sir, you're yeah. not audible. Sir, I'm sorry, you're not audible, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Sorry, sir, are you there? We are not audible, sir. So if you could just come back with your question. Okay, till then we can move on to Aruna, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Your question. Yes, Ayush, a very innovative project indeed. I was very inquisitive to just look at it. Now, one small question. The DC motor you talked about, which you're going to use, what kind of energy conversion takes place? Ma'am, it is actually an AC motor, slow speed AC motor. Okay, okay. And if it is DC, will it work here? Ma'am, the DC motor does not work here. Okay, what's the difference between AC and DC? Do we have any idea? No, ma'am. Okay, no problem. Just give a thought to it. Okay, thank you. Ma'am, ma excuse me, ma'am. My power is back on and I can now turn on the fish feeder to show you. It works. Yes, yes, yes. Show it. Now, please observe how the fish food is dropping into the fish bowl kept below. Ma'am, 
That's all. I hope this innovative model known as the intelligent fish feeder will be able to solve the problem of keeping my fishes hungry when we go away on vacation. Thank you. Yes, you came back well. Thank you, Ayush. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rainwater harvesting presented by Shriyan Rajan of class 3D. Good, good afternoon, respected teachers. Today, I am going to show my child's model based on rainwater harvesting. We know that the water is the precious natural resource on earth and every living being on earth need water to stay alive. But we are facing too much of water shortage in many places. Rainwater harvesting is the method of collecting and storing rainwater for later use so that we can use it in dry seasons like summer. Now, I'm presenting my science model based on rooftop rainwater harvesting. We can place a collection tank on the top of our house and join it to the reservation tank through after pipes. And when the collection tank fills with rainwater, the rainwater goes to the reservation tank through water pipes. We will always cover the reservation tank so that we can get clean, fresh water. Now, we can use it in many purposes, like watering the plants, washing cars, and many more household purposes. After using, we should turn the tap off. By this method, we can collect and store rainwater and it should not run into drains or go away. Apart from that, I want to explain a scientific fact about why water flows from upper tank to lower tank. That water flows downwards because of gravity. The gravity is a form of potential energy and the water that flows downwards flows in response to difference in potential energy from high to low. Thank you. Well, Shriyan, you have inspired us to use rainwater for our daily needs. Thank you, Shriyan. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, of class 4D is presenting us an ultimate alarm bell. Good afternoon to everybody. This is my project, Earthquake Alert Alert. Before I say about my project, I will say some important points of earthquake. Countries like Indonesia and Japan are suffering from earthquakes. So, to prevent this, I made this project. For making this project, I need a 9 volt battery, a buzzer, an on off switch, a nut bolt, a safety pin, and some wires. When the wire touches the safety pin, the earthquake alarm starts, the people get the alarm. One very most important advantage of this alarm is that. It can wake you up and you can immediately take cover or tend to other family members. The earthquake alarm can eliminate confusion, save valuable seconds, and provide peace of mind. Now, I will show you the function of the earthquake alarm alarm when the earthquake comes. Great work, Sriji. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Okay, we have Aruna, ma'am. Sorry. We have Aruna, ma'am, here with a question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Sriji, can you tell me name of an instrument used for detection of earthquake? 
Okay. Uh, how did you think of making this uh, model? Ma'am, I... What prompted you? Ma'am, I made this pro project for same many lives. Are you interested in geography? Yes, ma'am. You are interested in geography? Yes, ma'am. Very good, very good. And you have aligned it with uh, science subjects as well. Very nice multidisciplinary approach you have exhibited. Very good. Well done. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. The next boy is Shana Ghatak of class 3C. Fountain without electricity. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I am going to demonstrate how a party fountain works without electricity. The Greek inventor Heron of Alexandria created this device. This device has three parts. The water basin, water supply, and air supply. To make the fountain work, first pour water into water basin. Once the bottle tube is full of water, turn the entire fountain upside down. The water will run through straw tube into bottle tube. Once the bottle 2 is full of water, turn the entire fountain back over. Now pour water into the top of the bottle 3 again. Now you can see this will start the fountain. The flow will stop when the water supply the bottle too is empty. So we can conclude that when the water flows from high gravitational potential energy to low gravitational potential energy causes a fountain form due to increasing pressure on the inside of the system. Thank you. What a great idea, Shonak. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, uh, any questions for him? No? Okay, Shohato, please continue. Yes, ma'am. Now, I would like to call upon our Honorable Judge, Mr. Shura Fraser, to say a few words. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, I could understand there's a huge potential and uh, some wonderful and uh, some very provoking experiments were shown. And uh, I wish all the best to all the participants and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing great from you, Alan. Thank you, sir. Next, we have with us Miss Aruna Gorma. Ma'am, would you like to say something? Thank you, Shohardo. Thank you, Shohardo, really for me, uh, making this afternoon so very fascinating. A very good afternoon to our respected chairman, sir, Mr. Kishan Kumar Kejriwal, director, sir, Mr. Neil Kant Gupta, principal ma'am, Mrs. Malika Mukherjee, headmaster, sir, Mr. Vishwajit Majumdar, my dear colleagues, parents, and beloved students. I'm deeply honored to be a minuscule part of the fascinating science exhibition, Synapse. The young participants with their thought-provoking ideas and vibrant presentations clearly indicate the industrious effort put in by each one of them in designing their exhibits, be it water dispenser, hydraulic bridge, magic tea, 
electric lift or intelligent fish feeder. The list is quite long. The enthusiasm of the participants immediately pushed my imagination several years ahead to visualize them as our future scientists, engineers, research scholars, professors, and educators. I thoroughly enjoyed each and every moment of the last hour or so. I was at times, I was so deeply engrossed that I was uh, uh, unwilling to even blink. The uh, demonstrations were <coughs> indeed highly captivating. I really have no words to thank the teachers and parents of the participants for grooming them so well. I sincerely hope that the arduous journey of students in planning, processing, and executing their thought processes in putting forward their projects kindle the spark in them to achieve the dream projects in their lives. Thank you, everyone. All the best for your future endeavors. Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, I would like to request Mrs. Agumoni Chatterjee, ma'am, to throw some light on this exhibition. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, I would uh, appreciate the effort and the hard work put up by the students and in making the models. At the same time, I would also like to thank uh, the teachers who have guided them and of course, uh, dear parents who have helped uh, their child to make such wonderful models. And uh, it was, I mean, it was amazing to see the confidence level of the students, the way they spoke, the way they demonstrated, the charts they made, it was excellent. And I thoroughly enjoyed the exhibition. Thank you, teachers, as well as dear parents. Thank you very, very much, ma'am. Now, we have come to the end of this virtual exhibition. So, I would like to call upon my friend, Ujwal Dugar, to deliver the vote of thanks. Ujwal, please raise your hand. Yes. A very good afternoon to everyone present out here. It is my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of all of my co-participants for today's science exhibition, Synapse 2021-22 organized by the students and teachers of the science department of the primary school and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this exhibition a moment of joy and pride. First and foremost, I, Ujwal Dugar of Class 5B, would extend my heartiest gratitude to our Honorable Chairman Sir, Mr. Kishan Kumar Kejriwalji, for joining us today, my gratitude to our director, sir, Mr. Dilkant Gupta, for gracing the occasion with his presence. I would like to express my sincerest thanks to our principal, ma'am, Ms. Malika Mukherjee, ma'am, for her constant support. I am immensely thankful to our headmaster, sir, Mr. Biswajit Majumdar, sir, for his enormous cooperation for this event. We have been fortunate enough to be backed up by a team of a beloved science teachers who guided us and mentored us constantly for this exhibition with their untiring effort. A special mention for Nam Sonali Shah for creating the beautiful poster and the technical arrangement team for working behind the scenes to make this event happen. A big thank you to all the teachers and students of MCKV and Madhus Thali Vidya Peed for joining us in this platform today and showing your encouragement. Last but not the least, I also extend my heartiest, heartfelt thanks to our parents for believing in us and standing by us as pillars of strength. 
To conclude, a big thanks to all the audience who are present here. A big applause for all of you too. Thank you. Thank you, Ajwal. And I hope all of you enjoyed watching a little scientist at work, isn't it? So, uh, and we are also privileged to have with us our principal, ma'am, Ms. Malika Mukaji. Uh, ma'am, ma'am, would you like to just uh, say a few words of encouragement to our little scientists of MCKV? Yes, ma'am. I have a uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, um, ma'am. I have no words to express my happiness to see. And uh, like, yes, my children staying at home can do so many things. The way they are speaking, demonstrating as if, you know, experienced teachers are doing it. And it's wonderful. And this is what I want. I want more children to participate, think of something new, which is not there, so that we'll have really a true scientist in future as uh, expressed by Aruna Ma'am, because uh, the education world is expanding, the areas are expanding. So these children with small knowledge at present can be a greater educator in any area, any field. And it's wonderful, I really enjoyed. And, and I was thinking, I wish, uh, you know, I uh, I should have these children in my school to demonstrate to everyone. It's wonderful. Thank you, boys. I really learned and enjoyed this session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your wonderful words of encouragement. Uh, next, we are also privileged to have with us our headmaster, sir, uh, Mr. Bishwajit uh, Majumdar, sir. Sir, uh, if you could just say a few words of encouragement to a little scientist out here. Yes, over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. You know, uh, it's really, really amazing to see our kids are doing so wonderful experiments. And besides this science uh, experiments, you know, what I was thinking that they are wonderful speakers. The way they were communicating yes. means today we yes. had the workshop. I mean, the session on uh, multidisciplinary uh, approaches, there we are thinking and we're pondering on this, that how important it is to speak well and present well, besides being a scientist. So our children are almost ready. I can see future budding scientists and wonderful communicators to present wonderful gifts to the world. Thank you very much, children, and congratulations to all of you. Please keep it up and make sure that you keep on doing this sort of experiments with wonderful explanation that you have done. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir, for your words of encouragement. Thank you once again. So with this, we come to the end of our session, our, our virtual science uh, exhibition, and I'm ending the program. And thank you, children, parents, and teachers for helping us through this virtual uh, exhibition. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma you can end the meeting. Yes, ma'am.